thought you were going to say that I'm also a really good dancer. I didn't want to pancake my skin a lighter color to fit into the court of ballet. For those of you who are watching. I feel like my mom pretty much covered everything. <laughs> Steph Curry is the greatest shooter that I've ever seen. Hello. have a lot more in common than I'm sure a lot of people know. You're both born into multiracial families, you were raised by single mothers, and you've risen to the top of your respective fields as African Americans. Is there a common thread that it that has allowed you both to succeed? I thought you were gonna say that I'm also a really good dancer. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> I saw you dancing with the 106 year old. So I was a little let down That's as you were. That wasn't the common thread that she <laughs> she picked up on. As I'm embarking on my first season as a principal dancer, I'm experiencing something that I didn't prepare myself for. I think emotionally and mentally and psychologically, when you have all of these expectations and goals to reach this point that 1% get to, what do you do when you get there? How do you stay grounded and humble and striving? I burst out on the, the national scene with the Democratic Convention speech in 2004. It was the first time that I had a big national audience and everybody responded really favorably. My parents shared not only an improbable love, they shared an abiding faith in the possibilities of this nation. And so I got a lot of attention and interviews and magazine pieces and all this stuff. I still remember telling Michelle and, and uh, my closest friends, I said, I'm not any smarter today than I was last week. This is my wife, Michelle, as you know. This is when you've struggled for a while, and you've had the ability of being an ordinary person, and you've gone shopping, changed diapers, and tried to figure out how to pay the bills, and so forth, then handling some of these issues ends up being easier because you have a better sense of perspective. And that, in, for me at least, keeps me grounded. And it's good to have friends who will who will do that for you. If, if you start acting weird, they're all like... Checking. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what? You, suddenly you're some prima ballerina? Please. 18 months ago, y'all didn't know who I was. They called me all sorts of things. They called me Alabama. They called me Yo Mama. I had to explain no, it's Obama. When I think about the journey I've traveled, there's no doubt that young African-American, Latino, Asian, LGBT youth, they have more role models, the folks that they can immediately identify with. But what we also have to remember is that the barriers that exist for them to pursue their dreams are deep and structural. I hope that there are young men of color who are looking at me and saying, I can aspire to be the president or a senator or a community organizer, but if they are in neighborhoods where even if I'm on television, there are no men in their neighborhoods who've got uh, jobs that are able to support a family, then you've still got problems. Being the only African American in almost every environment in terms of classical ballet, it weighs on you and it wears on you after a while. Something that I fought so hard for throughout the beginning of my career is that I didn't want to pancake my skin a lighter color to fit into the corps de ballet. I didn't want to have to wear makeup that made my nose look thinner. Being African American has definitely been a huge obstacle for me, but it's also allowed me to have this fire inside of me that I don't know I would have or have had if I weren't in this field. So do you find now that uh, you're in a position where you can start pushing the barriers a little bit, and boundaries in terms of what people expect? I think that um, having a platform and having a voice to be seen by people beyond the classical ballet world has really been my power. I'm showing that it's possible to have any skin complexion, to have a healthy body image. It's, I think, forcing a lot of these top-tiered companies to address the lack of diversity that we're seeing in classical ballet. I have to say, as an outsider, when I hear that your body type is considered more athletic or large, you're tiny. For those of you who are watching, you may not be able to see. <laughs> you're petite. Yes. You know, the, so the notion that somehow that was even a question is, is pretty interesting. As a father of two daughters, do you see that at all? Do you see that pressure? That pressure, I think, is historically always been harder on African-American women. 
you know, the fact that they've got a tall, gorgeous mom who has some curves and that her father, their father appreciates, uh, I think is helpful. I do think the culture is changing for the younger generation a little bit more, but it's still a challenge. I mean, Malia will talk about, you know, black girl's hair. And she's pretty opinionated about the fact that it, it costs a lot, it takes a long time, that sometimes uh, girls can be just as tough on each other about how they're supposed to look. As a parent, that's a constant learning process. And looking back, was there anything that someone told either of you about race or didn't tell you about race that you wish they had or that you felt like you had to learn on your own? I feel like my mom really pretty much covered everything <laughs> with me. Being biracial, she made it very clear to me that, yes, you are Italian and you are German and you are black, but you are going to be viewed by the world and by society as a black woman and you should be prepared for that. What I always try to transmit to my kids is that issues of race, discrimination. So all those things are real and you have to understand them and you have to be knowledgeable about them and recognize that they didn't stop overnight, certainly not just when I was elected. I remember people talking about how somehow this was going to solve all our racial problems and I wasn't one of those who subscribed to that notion. If we could decide tomorrow that there was no discrimination at all, that, that, that we had some new drug that everybody took and suddenly nobody would be racially prejudiced. We still have a whole bunch of really poor kids who need help. It is wonderful that the potential dancer can see Misty and say, I can do that. But if there's no dance studio at all in their neighborhood, or if their school is chronically underfunded, then it's going to be a problem. It, we're not going to eliminate racism and, and prejudice entirely in this society. But what we can do is to greatly lessen how much it determines the life chances of, of people. Uh, and that should be our goal. Thank you. It's great to see you. Nice. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, all good? Let's cut camera, please. Thank you, guys.